I'm not a maid. I just like her. Tita Bobby kept shouting on me when we were driving here. Yeah? She's so loud. It's so yeah. annoying. They're so annoying. I hate this job, Jules. I know. Look, this mic's actually get close to you. I think we should just like... We can take over. Do you think the show would be successful if we would do it? <laughs> Maybe. Right? Maybe. Look, we even have some of the homeless plus clothes from Tito Bobby. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, welcome to Bad Friend. Hi. Right? And I can just like yell at you because that's super easy. It's like, you're late! You're late today! Why are you late? Right? You just have to do nothing. This is the easiest job in the world. Yeah. They don't even know how much we do. Can I still have my knife? Yeah, I think you should have your knife. Okay. That's okay. it. There you are. If they um, interrupt us, then... Then we use it? Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> be so nice. I think this will be so much nicer. You talking now? You starting? <laughs> no. Yeah, why don't you start the podcast? <laughs> Let them start the podcast. Go ahead. Is it on? Everything on? Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Welcome to Bad Friends. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to take over Bobby and Andrew. Yeah. Because this is such an easy job. We just get to talk and shout at each other right <laughs> right and, and be mean be mean we, we, we could be good good friends instead of bad friends yeah <laughs> right we're way nicer <laughs> so what did you do today juliana did um, you sleep until like four no i slept until um five <sighs> and i woke up because the constructors were coming to our house because um yesterday Tito Bobby flood the house. No. <laughs> well, we were on the beach. No, no, no. I didn't fucking. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So what? What else happened? And then the floor is broken, and then we have to move to another house in a week. How did he do that? I don't know. He, he couldn't hear it. So, but I don't believe him. Was he playing video games? He was doing yoga. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> he was exercising? Yeah. Oh, wow. You guys are doing a good job with him. What about you? <laughs> Tito Bobby, can you get closer to the mic? I am close. <laughs> closer. <laughs> This is it. It's right into my no, mouth. No, closer. I'm close now. This is the way. It, does, it can't get any closer than this. That's what you do. <laughs> you two are bad friends. Who are these two idiots? White dude and an Asian dude. You two are disgusting. Well, you two are something. We're bad friends. Somebody's got to go to a country club so he can get in at 3 o'clock. Because he is elitist. That's right. It's like, um, hey, everybody, welcome to De Bad Friends. I'm, I'm Bobby Lee. I'm Andrew Santino. And so, you know, I get a call yesterday from my one of my best buddies. He goes, hey. He goes, hey. You know how that's how he fucking answers the phone. I said, hi, Bob. I was actually very it's, nice the other day. I go, hey, Bob, yeah, how yeah, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I congratulated hey, you, 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 didn't you, I? Because, because what did you do? What did you do nothing. the other day? So, uh, nothing. What did you do? What do you mean? I do a lot of things. No, what did I congratulate you on, Bob? Oh, I'm being perfect? Mm. What did I congratulate you on? Oh, I... Oh, you sold a television show. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. That's huge. Yeah. And because... So I had to move... So let me say something. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So I'm... This week, I'm pitching to, to networks because I wrote a stupid show. Okay? With my friend Peter. And, Peter um, wrote it. Go ahead. God damn. You don't even have final draft on your computer. I bet my life on it. Uh, okay. Anyway. Do you? Do you I, have? I don't have a computer. Okay. okay. So Peter wrote it. No. You. I uh, do old school. Oh, 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 
Yes, uh, old school. Hemingway. What's, what's old school? On a fucking pad. With a feather pen? Yeah, yeah, with a feather pen. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, so you wrote the show with Peter, and you yeah. sold the show, and I was so happy for you. So then Thursday, we shoot this on Thursdays. Usually, yeah. Usually, and I call him and I say, listen, we're still pitching to other places. Mm -hmm. Can we move this to Friday? And he goes, ah, 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 you know, his face gets on fire. I'm Ghost Rider. <laughs> right? Yeah, and then, um, so then last night he calls me and he goes, meet me at 1 o'clock. We do it. We do this at three, by the way. Hey, Bob, do you think you can do this at one p.m.? That's what I said. Bob, right. do you think you can do it tomorrow at one p.m.? It would but help me like out. But that's like asking a normal person, just a normal person. Hey, can you get here at four in the morning? Normal people don't fucking sleep till three p.m. I'm just saying, I'm I'm not normal. I have I'm a I have a different that scale is schedule. Th but that's but that scale is incorrect. That's not correct. Oh, it's like somebody is saying, telling, "Hey, can you can you, can you show up at seven a.m.?" Yeah, okay, yeah pretty. Yeah. That's super reasonable. Seven a.m. Super reasonable. Okay. People do it every day to go to work. Every single day. In fact, the mass population probably does that every day. Yeah, but go ahead. Anywho, tell, tell your fucking story. Right. So, um, I go. I didn't. I go. Why? Don't worry about it. I move for you. That's right. I move for I, you. I move for you, and I go. Hmm. All right. You must have something important to do. That's right. So I get up, and it was really difficult. And you got up today, and it was hard to get up today, huh? It was huh? so hard to get up. You know, I well, get up. Yeah. I, go, I got a fucking, you know, Andrew has, his, his aunt probably has cancer, and he has to go to the hospital. Mm hmm Or, you know, he's meeting, you know, the Russo brothers. I am meeting the Russo brothers this afternoon. Because he's going to be in the next Avengers movie. <laughs> something, you know, something like that. And that satisfied. Let me finish! You're so annoying. I don't, I don't have any work coming in right now. Really? You're on Davy. It doesn't come back for a calendar year. A Davey. year. So I don't get to work for a year. Davey. So you get to dance around. You've done two commercials, okay? Davey. You've had two auditions. Davey. And you sold a television show. So then I go, uh, I come here and I go, what was it at three that you had to go? Well, I'm trying to get into this country club. Golf club. Country club. Golf club. <laughs> it's a men's club. It's a golf club. And I go, that's... Why you move? I have to go meet with the board today. That's important. All right, so at three p.m. Uh, all right, at the so end of the day, for, what are you so angry you're for? such a fucking you got ga you're I'm a gaslighting calm. dick. No, you're I'm a dick. Calm. You were smoking and you talked shit outside before the cameras were on. I'm so calm right Look now. Look at the average time that most Americans wake up. Yeah. Guess what time it doesn't have on there? P.M. No post meridian on there. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm. You get a, you complain about waking up at I, one o'clock in the afternoon. The reason why I to do, do it, me a little baby oh, favor. Oh, I'm sorry, Juliana's sick. Then why is she here? She sleeps right. She sleeps. She needs twelve hours of sleep. Why are you here if you're sick? She shouldn't be here if she's and sick. And I, I, I'm on a daily basis. I'm on her schedule so that she can get her fucking rest. Okay. Is that true, Jules? No. You no. don't sleep twelve hours. I do, but. There we go. She has a condition. She's we haven't gone to the. She's growing. She's an uh, eighteen-year-old girl. She's young. She's still growing. She needs her sleep and a rest. Her mind is still developing. You are fifty. You don't. You've got. Shouldn't you be 48. up? Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Yeah, forty-eight years old. I know, but you're kissing fifty right there. Is that fifty? Yeah. yeah. And it's fine. I'm not criticizing you. For yeah, your I, sleep schedule, but when I ask you to do me a small if they, favor, if can't you just do were, me a small if favor? Did, if people didn't know who we were, and we took our, we took headshots, and we we had a fucking committee like a focus group, yeah, and said who's older, I don't know, I don't know who would fucking win that fucking competition. That's because you were always ugly. You always looked ugly. Any, I got uglier as I got older. That's fine, but you were you always looked that way. That's mean. That's cruel. It's just as cruel as the thing that's you just said to me, Bob. You just said I I look older than you. you. Said I was fifty. You are. I know. You're almost 50. I know. And you know what we're going to do for your 50th birthday? Let's go back to the country club. Let's go back to the golf club and let's go back to your house. <laughs> Why are you moving out of your house? Okay. If we out, First of all, I was not going to even mention this. Jules did. So there are consequences to your behavior, young lady, right? <laughs> and we talked on the, we talked that we would not mention this and you threw me fucking under the bus. Okay. Ba -doom, ba -doom. That was so, you. So, um... You broke the floor and now you have to no, move no, out. No, 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 Can no. Jules tell it? Can I hear her tell it instead of you? Because yours is going to be. Just, uh, uh, what she just told it? Yeah. And she just said something that made me so angry. What did she say? She goes, and it's Bobby's fault. Something like that. Was right? it Bobo's fault? 
I mean, no one was there. <laughs> Except him. If it's only you at home, whose fault is it then? Okay. So what you're saying to me is this. That I took the kitchen... F- okay. So we have, a, we have two sinks in the kitchen. I know. Okay. We have an island. Yes. On the island, is next sink. to the sink, mm-hmm. right, is the lever for the fucking sink is one of those long metal things that stick out. And it's very loose. Yeah. You tap it a little bit, water sprays. Sure. What's next to the sink? The cat bowls. We have three cats. I know. Okay. Bojo or Goonie, one of those two cats, hit the fucking lever, right? Mm -hmm. While I'm in the other room doing yoga, these girls are going to the beach, (laughs) you know, because that's the life they live. Yeah. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Right, you bastard! You did, fucking ungrateful Did you even invite? Bastard. Did you invite him to the beach? No, she yeah. didn't. No, she didn't. I think Kalila did, but then no, you don't. You didn't invite me. But I think Kalila did. Yeah, but you didn't invite me. <laughs> so Why didn't the, you say Tito Bobby? Do you want to come to the beach? Do you not care if he comes to the beach? No, I care, but I think Kalila already did, and he said no. But I think it would mean a lot to him if you invited him. Okay, next time. Yeah, it would mean so much to me. All right. Oh, and uh, by the way, I wasn't gonna even mention this. But this, you just, you just, you deserve it. Um, when we were on the fucking car ride over here, we drove by a guy, right? And she goes, there he is. I go, and I wave to this guy. We're driving. Mm. And I go, who did I just wave to? It's him. Who? You would think that it was Brad Pitt. Right. A fam- uh, some famous you hot guy. You would think it was George Clooney just mm. walking down the street. Right. She goes, Jason Nash. You know who that is? Oh yeah, he does. Uh, um, yeah, he 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 did sketch stuff. I'm he did... sure he's a very nice yeah. guy and very talented. I know who right? he is. Yeah, but she acted as if it was Jesus just came back. I wasn't that excited. You were. Yeah, you were. You had t- yeah, you did. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, you were. Okay. You like him, huh? Yeah, she likes him. And then she does a slam, another slam that you did. Huh. I go, what? You like that guy? She, no, he old. I go, he. She goes. He old as you. And I was like, you know, that Yeah, hurts. but she likes him because she's enterta- she finds him entertaining. You don't have a crush on him. No. No, 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 no. It's not like that. I, I mean. She just thinks he's funny. I have no idea. She thinks he's funny. So anyway, I'm doing yoga. And um, all of a sudden, you know, I'm in the pose. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the stretches. Yeah. Right. All of a sudden, I see. Kalila running, they come home from the beach. The house is flooded. I go into the kitchen. There's like this much water, right? Wait, time out. Hard wooden floor. Time out, real fast. They were gone. You were home. The house flooded. You didn't know. No. Wow. Mm. So you had turned on the sink on accident. You went down to do yoga. I didn't fucking (laughs) turn on the sink. I never use that fucking sink. But neither do they. Yeah, they do. They but, use that single the time. But they didn't use it that day before the beach. The did cat they? hit it, man. The cat turned it on. Yes. So wait, it, it, it the, it's the spigot that goes into the sink. How would it flood? Is it plugged? Did the sink? No. Plug? So the so the 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 um is it the spigot? Sure. Where the water comes out? Yeah. I don't know if we can say mm-hmm. that, but what's it called? I think it's a spigot. Okay. Let's just say it called spigot. It was off to the side. Right. On the counter. Like it was turned. Because it turned. It ah, can turn. It can right. turn. Yeah. So what they're accusing me of. Is I went, gee, I have yoga in five minutes. I might as well just do this. Shh. Yeah. Shh. I like water. Yeah. And then walk yeah, away. yeah. 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 I did not do that. Do you know I know it's the cat? You know how I know it's the cat? The woman who bought this uh, house across the street from me, a uh, really sweet girl, anesthesiologist, just moved in. The first week she was in the house, she has two cats. She's gone because she works long hours at the hospital for 13 hours one night. She comes home. The entire house is flooded because a cat turned on the sink exactly. and ruined the whole thing. Uh-huh. She a week she moved in, she yeah. had to redo the whole floors and all and the whole entire house. Yeah, because all the water kept going down to the other levels too. Yeah, and that's what we're worried about. So wait, is your water seeping down to the other levels of the no, house? No, but the wood is getting bumpy. Oh, dude, it's, yeah, it's warped. Bad. It's oh, that's warped. really yeah, bad. It's bad. Yeah. Do you think that she should pay for it? Yeah. I think you should work but it here's off. Here's another slam that she did. So I tell them, I swear to God. It's the cats. She doesn't believe me. This one. What do you think happened? Let me tell. Let me ask what Rudy. What do you think happened? 
No, I think、um, the cats, but then he could have heard the water. Oh, she's saying you were negligent. Mm. In your behavior, she's saying you don't care. So, what she's saying is is that、wow. I'm doing the yoga pose. What, po- what position do you think you're in? Right here? Yeah, what is that? Is I'm that- upside down right now. Oh, on your <laughs> this head? Is, this is the floor. What's that called? What? That, what's, I don't know yoga positions. Head- what's it called? Headstand. Headstand. I'm doing a headstand. <laughs> that's what that's called? How come some of them are so elaborate and that one's called headstand? <laughs> t h e y r e downward dog. t h e r e Yeah, yeah, yeah I do downward dog. What's the、yeah. baby one? Bur- uh, uh, um. Child, child childbirth,、pose. child pose. Child, child pose. pose, yeah, yeah. What's the other one? There's,、um, a, there's another really. Cobra. Cobra, cobra. the cobra. The, that's this one,、yeah. right? No, not no, this that's one. That's an eagle. That's an eagle. That doesn't look like an eagle at all. This yeah, looks more like yeah, a cobra. Yeah. Because snakes intertwine. This looks like spinal bifida. Yeah. They, they call it the spinal bifida.、Um, this is the humpback. But here's what happens. So I tell them we're bummed. And so I guess 40 minutes later, I go, I'll have some coffee. <laughs> right? What? So I, I, so I, you know, it's one of those coffees where you know, it's a machine where you press the button. It goes, right, right.、Yeah. It's like it little cups. Yeah, it's a,、right. it's a Keurig. Something like that. Yeah. And I press it. And then all of a sudden, there's coffee all over the place. <laughs> and I had forgot to take the cup and put it in the thing. Oh, it just said, you just thought coffee, the cup will be there. I just, I don't know what's Make going on. Make coffee, coffee machine. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Biggity boggity boop. So there's now coffee everywhere. Bob. And then she looks at me and she goes, You did the faucet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love you, Jules. And Look, I go, you, wait.、Oh, I'm on your team. It's not your fault.、Mm. It's not your fault. That being said,、um, someone has to pay for it. And that someone is you. How much is it going to cost? Be real. Did they estimate it? It could cost anywhere between 20 grand. I don't know. Where did you, where did you guys have to go in the meantime? You have to move into a rental? I'm trigger, trying to figure out if we can stay there. While, it's, while all that work, they have to rip up all the floors, right? Yeah, I don't know. There's、man. no way. This woman、sense. across the street had to go to a hotel. She couldn't, they, they were like, you can't be in the house. We're ripping up all the floors. That's a disaster. Was she bummed? You know what's so funny is like, she was upset, but she goes, This isn't the first time my cats have fucked something up in the house. Yeah, there was the first time in my mind I'm like, Is it worth having cats? I mean, you know my opinion. I know. I my, love you know, my cats. You know what my dog has never done? What? It's never turned on my sink. Yeah. You know what your dog has never done? What? Hopped onto a kitchen cabinet. Yeah, because that's insane. Why do I have an animal inside the house that, that acts like it's a zoo? <laughs> That's true, right? I like animals that poop stay outside. Stay on the floor. Stay on the floor. We should have a rule. Cats, stay, stay on, the, on floor. the floor. Next time you're on anything levitated, good luck. Good luck to you. Good luck. You're going to go to Peru. Because in Peru, they have a,、um, uh, a cat eating festival. Do they? Yeah, where they hunt the cats, though. So they、oh, put a cat. In the wild. No, I don't know. They're like house cats. You put a cat in an arena and they throw like bow and arrows at it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it's in Peru. You know, I don't know how the game works.、But. Well, cats have different meanings all over the world, right? If you go to Egypt, cats are the most like、uh, they're they're high praised, right? They're like these beautiful、uh, ancient creatures they, 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 that they give a lot of love to. But then you go to certain places, like、uh, um, in the、uh, in the Netherlands,、uh, they have shot putting contests with cats. Do you know that? Oh no! They throw them as far as they can. Wow! Because cats are going to land on their feet. Yeah. So you'll just, they'll just huck them as far as they can. Those Netherlands people are wild, dude. So they spin them around. And, yeah. yeah. What do they call that when they put two ba- cats in a bag and hang them over like a,、um, a phone? Pinata? You know? No. What they do is back in the day, you should put two cats in a bag.、Uh-huh. They throw it on like a,、um, a, phone, a wire? phone wire, right? And then they just kill each other in the bag. Whoa. What is that called? Two cats in a bag? Yeah. Do you know what that is, Jules? Have you、There's、ever heard of that? There's a term, but、no. it's a famous term, but I forgot what it was. Um, But you know what? I love cats because, you know, dogs to me.、Uh, this, is how, this is how to cat proof your home. There's nothing in here. Dogs to you, what? Go ahead, keep talking. Dogs to me、um, are a little too needy. What, in what way? I've always had cats. I prefer cats. Yeah, dogs but- are always like, you know, where are dogs are always like, where are you going? Yeah, they want to know. They're concerned. Nah, nah. I don't like it. What, if a dog. Cats what- are like, who are you? I like that. You're, they live in your house, so that's so disrespectful. I, 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 it's like that in women, right? You don't want a woman that's too needy. But you want, you want a woman that shows you affection and love, which cats do on their time. That, and that's what I like. It's like Kalila when I met Kalila. But Kalila doesn't. Kalila shows you love and affection all the time. No, but Kalila was so difficult to get. What do you mean? Oh, to like, get as a girlfriend? Yeah, I mean, it was, I, I was like, I might have people to get this one. 
Yeah. First of all, she's I mean, like, none of us I'm, thought so. She, for, for, what? None of us thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. When I first saw Kalila, I was yeah, like, yeah. and I met her. Not when I saw her. How about this? Take yeah. away just her, that she's pretty. Yeah. When I saw that she was so cool and nice and sweet. Yeah. I, I was a, a little annoyed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that was your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It bothered me. People got, yeah, people get annoyed. People got annoyed. Yeah. Because a good-looking girl is a good-looking girl. There's a fucking billion of them in Los Angeles. Yeah. But she's very cool, and it was a little bothersome for me. Yeah. It was I, annoying. Yeah. Better help. Hey, Bob, you and I both need therapy, and we get it, don't we? I use I use this um, um, service in my personal life. It changed my life. I love better help. Yeah, because it's nice to talk to people, and I know it's difficult right now. It's hard. Everyone's having hard times, but BetterHelp uh, gets you communicating in almost no time. I think during the pandemic, um, doing internal growth is very. Um, it's, this is your time to grow within and to um, to help yourself, um, you know, spiritually grow, emotionally grow. I agree. And deal with trauma or whatever you and some issues that you have. So and this I, way, you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Okay, you can log into your account anywhere and message your counselor. These are professional people online. Uh, they're committed to facilitating therapeutic matches. They make it easy for you, right, Bob? I mean, it's a simple thing. We both used it, and they want you to be happy, and uh, we, I think we all deserve to it's talk to somebody. It's also affordable, and it's more traditional, uh, more than offline counseling, and financial aid is available as well. Right, so if you need it, uh, they need it, they can help you out. They want you to start living a happier life today. Uh, go to their website and read their testimonials. You can tell uh, that they have had so many people that agree that it's really worked through some of their hard times, especially during Pandy. Mm -hmm. So go to BetterHelp.com slash... Bad friends. That's H-E-L-P, better H-E-L-P, better help, and join over one million people taking charge of their mental health. Uh, special offer for our Bad Friends crew. The listeners get 10% off your first month. Ain't no shame in talking to somebody. Ain't no shame, shame. Ain't no shame. Go to BetterHelp.com slash... Bad friends. Me undies. Me undies. Me undies, guys, is my favorite underwear. It's like they have so many cute designs. Um, it fits so snug on my on my. It almost feels like I'm not even wearing underwear. Um, I use it when I perform too because I yeah. like to do little dances on on stage. Um, it literally is my favorite um, underwear company. Stretchable, breathable fabric. Uh, I like to bring a bunch of me undies with me on the road, and I change them out depending on my mood. Sometimes I want little pizza on there. Sometimes I want little little palm trees. I have some with raccoons. I have some with pandas and others, et cetera, et cetera. It's the softest fabric known to man, baby. It's sustainably sourced beechwood trees that magically turn from pulp to yarn to undies. They have so many different colors and styles. Uh, we do love it. We both have really undies, and it makes Bobo's butt look really nice, nice and plump, and plump, like, big old peach, like a Kardashian. But you're like a little Korean Kardashian, yeah, huh? I am, yeah. yeah, you are. MeUndies has a great offer to, offer for our listeners. Any first time purchasers, you'll get 15 percent off and free shipping. They send oh it for free. Oh my god, what is this lottery? This is the lottery, baby. 100 percent satisfaction guarantee. Get 15 percent off your first order, free shipping, and 100 percent satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash Bad Friends. That's MeUndies.com slash Bad Friends. No, you but, and your but, wife bother me. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. But but let me say this: she shows you love and affection, on just like a dog does, right? She's concerned with where you go. But in the beginning, no. So in the beginning, right? It was like her first thing was, "I'm never gonna go to L.A." She lived in Long Beach, right? And I go, "What do you mean? Like you're gonna have to come to me." So every day, you know how far Long Beach is. That's where I used to live down there. How long was how I mean, from L.A. 45 minutes every day. In traffic? Yeah, but an hour then in traffic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Every day I would drive there and back. There wow. and back for months. How long did it take before she kissed you? Well, um, it took about a month. A month, no kisses. No, she would do things like... Um, Spit in my face and stuff. Hmm. <laughs> I swear to God. Which is just a, as like a bit, like as a ha, sexual, ha, ha. like a sexual. Oh, thing. that was hot. That was like, ooh, yeah. Yeah. Took a while to kiss, and then eventually, because um, what I needed to seal the deal mm -hmm. was her to come to L.A. to come to the comedy store to see you perform. Not only see me perform, but see, because I thought I think she thought I was a lower level comic. She didn't know who you were at all. She did. I mean, outside in, 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 in the comedy about world, Mad TV and all that. That's stuff. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, she but, knew you as an actor. Yeah, but she didn't know, right? So once I brought her to the comedy store, she understood. You, you have to bring a girl to the comedy store. Well, they have to. Anytime you're dating someone, yeah, whether it's brand new or it's late in the relationship, uh -huh. you always need to let them see that you're doing well. Yeah, to give them some semblance of like a hope. Hey, you know, I'm like, yeah, not. Alusive. I'm not. I'm homeless. I'm not shitting the bed. <laughs> I'm actually like this. I'm actually. That's only, and that's only because. 
oftentimes people just go, yeah, I know my buddy's a stand-up comedian. Oh, what is he? Yeah. Uh, he does it like, I think in June, he does it like once every June, every June, maybe like once a year or yeah. twice a year. Yeah. And then we're, we become that same guy in their mind. Oh, you do stand-up? Oh, when do you do, when do, you do it? Uh. <laughs> every fucking waking minute of my life, every night of my fucking life. Oh, I've never seen you. Or you're, or you're in a cafe in the Midwest, right? You're on a gig. Yeah. Right? And you're at a cafe and some guy will walk up to you and sit next to you or whatever. Doesn't know who you are. What are you doing here? Hey, what are you doing here? And I go, oh, I'm a comic. And he goes, hey, you live in Los Angeles? Mm -hmm. I go, yeah. You know Frankie Rice? And I go, Frankie Rice? No, how would I know him? He does comedy as well. Oh, I say yes. Oh, you do? Every time. <laughs> All right, let's say it. No matter who it is. Let's do this fucking Okay, I'm, I'm eating. I'm, right. e I'm, in, I'm in, oh, we're in Ohio. We're in Ohio. I'm just eating soup at a little restaurant by myself. Hey, my redheaded friend. Hey, how are you? Hey, my name is Bill. What's your name? I'm Andrew. Oh, Santino. hello, Andrew. Nice wow, to meet what you. A, what great weather today, huh? It is, uh, it is, uh, yeah. Oh, yes. I haven't seen you. I come to this coffee shop a lot. I haven't seen you around. What, uh, I mean, yeah, my, I don't, uh, I don't live here. Where do you live? Can I get the, I get the check? <laughs> um, I live in uh, Southern California. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I've never been to California. I've never really, I've, ever left the state. Well, you should go. Oh, well, you should go because yeah. it's a it's a great place. What do you do? What do you do for a living there? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay for. <laughs> I'm gonna pay for his stuff as well. Thank you. Thank you. What do you do, Andy? <laughs> I'm in. Uh, I'm. Um, I'm actually in town doing stand up. Will you do stand up? Wow. Yeah, I'm at the club here. I'm just at oh, the club right up the street. You, you must know Deborah Nickelback. Oh yes, yes, you, I do. You know Deborah Nickelback? Do you keep in touch with her? Well, she died. She did die. <laughs> yeah, she died. Oh, God, yeah. But she I, did stand-up comedy as well. Right, I remember her. Yes. She was great. She was very good. In mm. fact, mm. she was so good that that's somebody that I looked up to for a long time. I took note. I, that's someone I love. Yeah. I love her. And for an African-American woman to do stand-up. Thank you very much. stand-up in the... Yes. She wasn't African-American. She was white. She was white, but you, she was always tan. <laughs> <laughs> I do Good lie. Save. I have to lie my way Good through it. Good save. But when someone does that, there's no advantage of. Uh, you have to just go for. It. You gotta. Go, I just go. Yes, may I think I've heard of him. Yeah. Because if you say no, then they're gonna go. Huh. You know Bryce Mickelson? No. Huh. You know Adam Chetlahan? No. Yeah. Huh. And they just keep digging to think, and then they'll just shoot for the moon. Then they'll big do a big name that they know you this don't know. This is what I do. Like you do. You do me now. Okay. Yeah, well, just a table for one. And uh, are you, Bo are you Bobby Lee? No, you're supposed to not know, know who I am. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> the same scenario sorry. you were in. Oh, yeah, sorry. Same <laughs> fucking scenario. What the fuck are you doing? I haven't acted in a long time. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hold on. Yeah, uh, I'll just take a booth here, and that's fine. Hey, man. Head off. Uh, I haven't seen. I've never seen you here. Head off. Oh, hey, hi. Hey. Are you? Uh, are you? Are you new in no, town? No, I'll be real. Um, no, I, <laughs> Hold on here. <laughs> I always open like yeah, that. Yeah, I always open like that. No, no, no. I just, I, hey, man, yeah. how are you? Good? good, man. Good, good. Good. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy uh, out there today. Isn't that nuts? That car accident happened on 998? Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. You didn't read about it this morning? Did you watch the morning news? No, man, I'm not. With I'm not, Ken and Carrie? Yeah, I'm not from around here. Oh, you're not from, no, you're not a loke? I'm not oh. a loki. Oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from, uh, I live in Los Angeles. Wow! Yeah, the big That's city, right, Captain. What That's goes on right. over there, huh? You must be a Hollywood guy. Uh, uh, cocaine nights, my friend. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Are no. you a Hollywood guy? No, no. I'm just. I, I'm just a working. I just do stand up. Shut up. Yeah. You're a stand up comic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Really? Mm. Where are you? Perform are you in town performing? Yeah. Where at the club right up here in the street? Yeah, the Chucklefuck Factory. Son of a gun. Yeah. Son of a gun. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what do those What do those tickets cost? Maybe me, me and my me and my wife will go. Uh, this sold out. It's sold out. It's sold out. Yeah. Wow. Well, they must have given away a bunch of tickets or something. That's wild. I didn't even know. They didn't even tell me that they were selling. I don't them. do comps. What does that mean? Yeah, I don't. You know, I have uh, because I'm a special act that um, I don't have. Oh, um, you're a handicapped guy. No. And I was gonna say that when I saw you when I walked up. <laughs> you fucking. <saw> <laughs> 
No, but uh, but honestly, yeah, yeah. no, I, I didn't know. So you do comedy. That's why you know I know some guys that moved out there to do comedy. Yeah, and they're doing really yeah? well. Yeah, they're doing Ooh, very well. I want to know. Hold on for a second. <laughs> yeah, let me get my notebook and pen. Okay, so I can write it down. Well, it's just some guys that I grew up with. Go ahead, tell and, me the names, please. I'm very eager to hear it. Well, Sarah Silverman, Patton Oswalt. <laughs> <laughs> now, if that happened, if he starts naming names yeah, that you I'll know, be like, yeah, okay, oh, yeah, I, do yeah, know I know them. them. Yeah, I actually have had a guy tell. I had an Uber driver name someone that we did know. Uh, I was in uh, Jersey. Mm. I was I was somewhere on the East Coast. Oh no, I was doing. Uh, yeah, I was doing Stress Factory in Jersey. And he na- he goes, uh, "Where are you going?" I said, "I'm going to do this comedy club." And he goes, "Oh, cool. I, I know a comic out there in uh, in uh, in New York." I said, "Oh yeah, you know New York guys. I'm I'm an LA guy." He goes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Do you know, uh, 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 do you know so-and-so? So-and-so? No, no, I don't know who that is. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. But I know a lot of them. Then he's like, you know, Mark Norman? I was like, yeah. Do you know Mark? He's like, yeah, I know him well. I know as a, as a friend. I was like, oh, it like, and then it shook me. I didn't, I was like, oh, uh, oh, right, right. Okay. Uh, and then it kind of became like, well, what do you want to talk about then? Like, right. Cause I, you make this barrier of like, you, I know, I know he's not going to know and we're not going to. It's just going to be weird. But then we started chatting about comedy, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I can only get there with people that are either podcast friends. Sure. I can't do it with people that are, like, fans of mine from other, you know, mediums, I guess. Uh, like like, like TV? Like Matt TV or whatever. Right. It, it doesn't feel like there's they know me. Yeah. Right? But with podcasting, they know me. Or I can talk to people that are in um, a 12-step group. Like I've been on the road where um, some I'll be in the bathroom somewhere at a restaurant or something, and then I'll hear two guys talk about the book, and then I'll go, "Oh, I'm a friend of Bill W." All right. Right, and then they'll go, um, and then the, it always changes, you know, I mean, the, the relation almost as if we're instant, kind of a part of the club. You're, it's you're akin to one another because yeah. Of, so yeah. then you, you know you they're just a you know. We speak the same language, I guess. So th- I, I like that. You know, that's so funny that there's this unspoken bond that that addicts have in the same way that comic, no matter where you are, you just meet a comic, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. If they're a working comic, you right away are like, oh, dude, I, we have this thing. I talked to Brad Garrett on my show, and, you know, I said, said that Brad's anniversary was coming up, and, and Richard Lewis's anniversary just happened for mm. 26 years of sobriety. Mm. And I was asking how, like, his generation bonds over that over the years, because... Mm. Obviously, all the people that got sober in his generation stayed alive. Yeah. A lot of guys that didn't in that generation mm. are fucking dead. Yeah. Which is crazy because in our generation, we didn't lose a lot of guys. Yeah, because I think it's not as... Um, they lost a lot of guys to Because back in the day, it was like something that people enabled each other to do. It was part but of now culture. it's like when you're a full-blown drug addict, you can't even get into the clubs really. Well, they don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, it's it's difficult for to survive because it's just like, it's just a completely different game. Whereas before, like I, I saw a documentary where Richard Pryor was on a movie set. Right? High. Not only high, he was smoking crack God. on set. You know what I mean? And they were the PA is like, uh, Richard, we need you on set. Yeah. He's like, <sighs> hold on, baby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. like, he, sir, he's smoking crack in the in the trailer. It was sort of enabled, or you know. Well, it was almost because they were such, you know, they were such big stars that were drug addicts. People like Pryor or Farley. Yeah. That it was like, fuck, we need them because they're so valuable. Yeah. That what are they going to do? They're going to tell them no, and then then they're going to tell them to go fuck themselves. Yeah. And then they're like, uh. that's the problem. Is there's no balance to that because you're not going to be able to tell an addict to stop when they're in the middle of it, especially if they're. It's like it, it's like. It's like when someone tries to say to Trump that he can't do something, and he's like, "I already did it, and I'm the best." Yeah. Tell the guy that won presidency that he did he can't do anything, and you're like, "Really?" Because yeah. I I I did that. So that's it's the same idea. If you're an addict, you're like, "I'm fucking killing it." Who's to say that I'm not doing it right? That mm. so it's hard to communicate that to them. But also that kind of behavior though isn't like tolerated anymore. Like for instance. Well, no, if times it, have changed. Like in that movie, Island of Dr. Moreau with Marlon Brando and yeah. Val Kilmer. Yeah. One day, they just completely shut down production mm-hmm. because Val Kilmer refused to go on set if Marlon Brando didn't get there first. And Marlon Brando refused to go on set if Val Kilmer didn't get there first. Right. So they just shut down the fucking day. In this day and age, <sighs> yeah, the network would come, uh, the studio would come down and go, all right. Josh Brolin and Brad Pitt are coming in. Get the fuck out. 
Right. You know what I mean? They just wouldn't tolerate it. No, it'd be, it would be a, you get wiped clean. If somebody wrote an article that I thought was very funny. I don't know if it was like an onion thing or something, but they said, uh, facts you don't know about celebrities. Mm. And it's got to be a bit. But it said Ben Affleck refused to shoot for six days on Geely because they made him wear a Yankees hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. But like that would be the level of uh, you can't do that shit anymore. I don't know. I just think that like, uh, well, you know what? Like here's what's changing in the business, genuinely. Mm. When you told me about selling the show and I was genuinely happy for you and I said, what's it about? And you said, about, it's about Kore a Korean spa. Mm-hmm. In South Los Angeles, correct? Yeah, in Korean, Koreatown. In Koreatown. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was in South Los South Angeles. No, LA. it was in Koreatown. It's fine. And I thought that's great. And I said, who you did? Who'd you do it with? And we don't have to say his name if you don't want yeah, to. Peter. I okay, Peter. Peter. Yeah. And I said, who's Peter? I don't know Peter. And you said he is a. <laughs> what'd you say? You said he's Korean. A, f a fat Korean. A fat Korean. Gay guy. Gay guy. And I said, perfect. Why? Because. That's who you need to write that show. Yeah, because it, if you said to me, I'm going in there with, uh, you know, Dan Greenfield, I'd be like, well, get someone Korean to write it, the fucking it, it's Korean show. It's funny spa that you show. say that. And I, I don't like, you know, really talking about stuff that really isn't real yet because I, selling a show isn't real to well, me. Well, then we can, we don't have to. No, we but can, I, well, no, it's fine. I, I like to talk about it because yeah. I, think I think it's important. Yeah. I think it's fucking important. Yeah. Right. But there is something about, Going in because I've sh pitched shows with you know older white or you know and famous guys, famous famous showrunners and yeah. it just doesn't work. There's something about going in with a kid who's you know young, gay, Asian, and in this climate, mm. it's almost as if once he does his thing in the pitch, what's his thing? He just does this. I mean, got so he does this thing. What, what, what did he like? He just blow, his... blow one of the executives? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's like, so he, here's the show. He just, <laughs> he just kind of turns it up. Yeah, he gazes it up. Is that what you're trying to say? No, I'm not saying that. You just did. I didn't. I'm just saying <laughs> that he does a thing. Sure. And once he does that, right, it's like, oh, we're going to sell the, this. Are you gay on the show? No. Is there a gay character on the show? He's gay. On the show? Yeah. Okay, great. Right. And I, I called you on the phone and I said, is there a white, angry, redheaded guy who maybe works in the shop what's, next door? What's great about the show is is that um, because it's... Um, is their landlord a white, angry, redheaded guy? No. Oh, the guy that... Oh, the guy that um, we have a part in the, in the show, mm -hmm. right, that you could play. And he... You're, because what I love about pitching a show like a Korean spa... Is that you? Because we have patrons that come in or regulars. It's like yeah. Cheers. Yeah, where everybody knows your. Everyone knows. Ev everyone, everybody right. knows your your balls. And in Korean spas, if you haven't been to a Korean spa, it's like you know you'll see, you know everyone goes there. Hispanics, black people. Yeah, everyone yeah, it's very, yeah, it's very multicultural. Very multicultural. But it's eight seventy percent Korean dudes, older Korean dudes, right? Yeah, it's mostly it's mostly Korean guys in their eighties. Yeah, which is wild. I love it. I love it's it. Wild. So um. But there is a character in my show that he's a limo, like a limo driver. I'm a, I'm a limo driver. Yeah. Okay. And so you're always in the steam room at night. Love it. But you're always with other celebrities. Love it. Because you're you're a limo driver for celebrities. So before they take them home, I say, do you want to go to a spa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. And you're always complaining about things. Mm -hmm. And you, sitting next to you is always like, you know, a big guy. But they don't say anything. A famous guy. So hopefully one day if the show goes, right? Yeah. We could have like somebody. You're just going on these rants. I love it. And you're next to like you know, whoever it might be, Tom uh, Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love to be in a spa with Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what else you could do? Mm. Because every time I used to go to the old when I lived, uh, when I lived in mid near Mid City, I would go to the old, the Korean spa that's connected to the driving range on Wilshire. Ah. You know, it's a driving range, and then the Korean spas. In, yeah. So that could, I could be I could work at well, the driving range. Blue Chew. Hey guys, you remember the days when you were always ready to go? Mm -hmm. Now you can increase your performance and get the extra confidence, confidence in bed. Listen up, bluejew.com. That's blue like the color blue. Yeah, it brings you the first chewable uh, with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. It's going to get it pumped up. Pumpy. I've liked it, I've used it. You yeah, know, look, I used it. it. It really doesn't work good. You can get a couple of good sessions in there, um, you can take them anytime, day or night. Uh, they're prescribed online by licensed physicians. You don't have to go to the doctor's office, so uh, get rid of all and that. And guess what? 
Hmm. They're made in the USA. That's right, baby. And since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy, no awkwardness, and you don't have to even leave the house. And they got a special deal for the listeners right now. Go to bluechew.com and get your first shipment for free. That's it, for free when you use the special promo code. Bad friends. That's right, that's B-L-U-E, chew.com, promo code. Bad friends. It's better, cheaper, faster choice. We thank them for sponsoring the pod. Remember, support our sponsors. You support us. You make this possible. Thank you. Use the promo code badfriends at bluechew.com. My Korean spa is called Hyundai Spa. I'm going to tell you, because I don't want people to flood there. Like the car company? Yeah, I think yeah, it's spelled the same Hyundai's way. own, uh, do they own them? No. Because they own a lot of stuff. Well, my spa is in an alleyway. There's no sign, really. Oh, so it's not a nice spa. No. Okay. And it's been there forever. And um, it's 24 hours. Of course. Why would you shut you down? You walk in. There's an old Korean lady there. You mm-hmm. pay 20 bucks, $15. And you walk in, and it says, Hyundai Spa, we do your taxes. <laughs> shut, shut up. I'm not fucking kidding you. We do your taxes. They do taxes. Barbershop. All right. Ping pong arena. Love that. Right. They do um, all kinds of stuff. Wait, and wait, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> what is t- taxes is, I, it is says way it. out there. I know, but it says it. Barbershop ping pong is like athletic, get it cleaned up, but taxes I is like. I think Han, the guy, because there's this guy named Han. He's a Korean man. He He's owns like 70 it. Year, old, year old man. Huh. And this guy Han, right? He only goes at two in the morning. It's his own spa. So he also used to have a headshot of me. when I Because I've been going there for years since Mad TV days. Yeah. He used, to, he, he used to have a Mad TV, you know what I mean? Headshot of me. And when you would walk into the lobby, it would just be a, be a headshot of me framed, right? <laughs> it was just one of those, you know. Did you sign it? Yeah, I signed it, yeah. right? And then at my, when my career started just depleting, because after Mad TV, there was like an eight-year gap where I didn't do anything. I know, I remember. He, he just took it off. <laughs> <laughs> he completely took it off. And so now there's like a dust, you know what I mean? Just an outline of where it used to be. An outline of He didn't fucking fill it, right? So whenever I walk in there and there's just this dust ring. You what know about what I mean? now? He wouldn't put back up? No. You're killing it There's now. There's no way. That's so mean. It's so mean. Han, put yeah. the fucking picture back but, up. Uh, but this dude, right, um, at 2 in the morning, and ask my brother, or ask Pauly, yeah. Pauly Shore, because I brought Pauly Shore, which was the biggest regret. Why? Bro. So Pauly's always there, right? And I try to see his, if his car is in the parking lot, because if it is, I won't go in. Because you don't want to talk? I, no. I'll tell you what he does. As I walk in, and if he's there, he'll be completely naked with two Korean men. He was touching them, right? Uh, uh, and, he, and he goes, Chinese people are the most beautiful people in the world. <laughs> and he sings that out loud. But he's right. I know. But then, <laughs> And then we'll be in the steam room, and he'll go, Chinese people. Does he not know it's a Korean spa? He doesn't care. Do you think he knows where Korea is compared to he China? Does, he does. He huh. does. But... You know, Paulie has always been, he was raised with Asians. Because I don't know if you know this, but well, the comedy the, store the, staff, the entire used to staff be Thai. Well, yeah. I mean, what, what's his name? Has a Thai food restaurant down in Santa Monica. Right. Yeah. So it used to be Thai, so he was kind of raised by them. So he has this weird, like, affinity for, uh, yeah, for Asians. But for Thai Asians. is much different than Korean. He doesn't, he doesn't see the difference. Well, that's good. He's, that's good. I don't see color. Yeah, I see Asians. So when Polly's there, I just it just I just a sense of dread. Uh, but I get that way. Do you don't you get that way about a lot of things when you see when I've avoided going into places that I when I see someone I know just because I'm like, I just can't. I can't do it. I was gonna go. I was gonna go get uh, one of my favorite Mexican restaurants right here near the house. Mm. And as I'm getting out of my car, I see someone waiting for a pickup order that we know, mm-hmm. and I just didn't want to talk. Yeah. And I just got in my car and I left because I was like, I don't feel like chatting. I do the, I, and I, I love seeing somebody I don't want to talk to first. Because mm-hmm. once they see you, it's like war zone. <laughs> once they see you, you're dead. You're dead. Right? You got to see them first. It's that moment of, oh, right. no. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then you're in the gulag. So then when I see them, right, I go, I just, I can do a route or I do what Michael McDonald always taught. To always have your phone. Yeah, get on your phone. On your hand. When nope. you're in public, always have your phone so that when he s- sees someone beeline towards you, you're talking to... S- and it's got to be something crazy. What do you mean, Dad's dead? <laughs> yes, I'm coming like, home now. Yeah, that, like one of those. Yeah, you have to have some kind of emergency. So back, back to Han, though, at 2 in the morning when he does. Yeah. I have people that back him. If you walk in the steam room, Han, this 70-year-old Korean dude who owns the whole thing, right? Is he, he, in, good, is he in good shape? Yeah, he's ripped. He, he loves me, Those old Korean dudes are ripped all the time. He puts his hands behind his back like this, mm-hmm. 
and he never sits. He's standing in the middle of the spa, in the steam room. So he's standing like this, right? Yeah. And he makes these noises. Oh yeah, what is, what is it? What is it? You know what I mean? What is he? What? I don't know. It's ab workout? His dick is this big. Oh, he's a heavy hitter. Yeah, he's got a big old Louisville slug. I know this guy. I know this guy. And he's just standing there. You know what I mean? Who? Who? Who did it? Is it? Is it moving like what? an elephant tusk? Is no, it just, it's just yeah. It's just I guess move, it's, when he goes. Hoyle! Yeah, but Hoyle! it's always it's always mid hard. Yeah, you know, it's Cause like because he's, he's up here. He's, he's, up, he's a yeah. thinker. He's, he's a, a thinker. thinker. He's a yeah. thinker, right? And you, once you walk, you can't just go. Excuse me, and close it like someone's taking a shit or something. No, you just have to. Get so in. you have to go. Oh, I gotta go in, right? Do you have to like uh, pay homage to the penis? Do you have to like tug on it and go? No, hum, he always, hum. he always, and I'll, I hate it because he always says hi to me. He goes, "Oh, there he is, comedy, <laughs> comedy, there he is." Oh, right, and I go, "Hi, yeah. how are you?" It's good to see you. And he goes back, who do you, who do you? And he does his thing. You know what I mean? It's fucking so weird. He's going to live forever, by the way. He probably will. Yeah, that's one of those guys. I think, but be honest with me. Mm. Are you ever concerned with the sanitary, uh, the sanitization of that place? Well, I think, you know, because you know I have gang, not gangrene. I have um, massive foot fungi. I think gangrene is, what's gangrene? Gangrene's where it's going to fall off. Yeah. No, you have fungus infection. You have an infection. And I got it from the spa. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And I think that because of this COVID thing, it's a cesspool for. Do you walk around without uh, flip flops? Not only that, I'm, I walk around free, baby. But wait a minute. I'm okay with the nudity, but you don't wear flip flops on your feet? F- what does free mean, baby? Bro, I'm walking. If I go there, I'm walking with uh, uh, aqua socks. You know those, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> those yeah, white yeah. guy aqua socks? Yeah. I just don't like that about public gyms, is my biggest beef. But it's, it, you know, I brought Ian Edwards there once. Yeah. And that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And I said, um, "You gotta be completely naked." He said, "Nah, nah, no, I don't, I don't do that. Son. I don't do that. I don't do that, son." So then we're like, "I'm getting naked." I go in to um, inside the steam room, and Ian Edwards walks in, and he's wearing and and number one a bathing suit. No, yellow basketball shorts, like Lakers, Lakers, shorts. <laughs> Lakers. And I go, "Where'd you find it?" He goes, "I found it in the lobby." What, he just took someone else's shorts? Yeah, because he didn't know what to do. All right. Because he doesn't want to be naked. Why why do you think it is? Just not his thing? It's just not his thing. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not his thing. There's some guys that aren't comfortable with it. It's not his thing. Who else have I brought there? I brought Jay Davis there, Steve Byrne, people like that. I like Steve Byrne a lot. Yeah. He's a good egg. He's a good dude. He's one of those guys that I think uh, has always made me laugh, and uh, I wish nothing but the best for someone like that. Honestly. Are you being honest? Yeah, because I really like, he's never been, he's always been positive and always been funny. Yeah, he's a nice guy. That's like a, a weird loophole in our business where you're like, why? he's funny and he's very sweet. Yeah, he really is a sweet so guy. So why, I, you know, I, I wonder I, why he's not, Well, you know, I mean. Um, more. Do you know how I met him? This is a, this is even sweeter. When you guys were on tour, right? Didn't no. you? No. No? So I'm in LA, I'm broke. Like, I'm dirt broke. Right. And I'm, I lived in. A uh, one a, a one bedroom apartment in Silver Lake with eleven guys. What? Yeah, I lived what are you in, a fucking migrant worker? Yeah, they used what to call it the dump, the dumpster. Yeah, it sounds like yeah, it. yeah. And it was like uh, we had a, I'm not kidding you, a 50 year old guy named Dave, homeless guy lived there. We had a 17 year old runaway from Beverly Hills, a girl. A rich kid, though. A meth head, though. Yeah, yeah, but she could, she'll go back. And she was anything. able to stay there. I can't say her name, but she was able to stay there because she cleaned the house. Well, because she was on meth all the time. Yeah, she would take a toothbrush at five in the morning. You go, and Sexy. she was just cleaning the fucking living room. Yeah, or the, you know, the whatever the living space. A responsible meth head is kind of cool, though. My brother Steve lived in my closet, like just in the fl- on the floor. Yeah. Where did you keep any of your stuff? Did you have clothes? No clothes. Uh, just a pile we would share community grab it but so we were living there and but for some reason I did the Tonight Show Jay Leno really? yeah wow so I took a bus there to Burbank to the Tonight Show yeah wow and so I was just and this is when right when phones came out cell phone like the Nokia like with, the, with for, Snake? yeah with Snake yeah, yeah 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 and I get a call and it's Steve Byrne. I don't know him. And he goes, hey, man, I'm Steve Byrne. I'm a comic. 
I go, what? And he goes, I live in New York. I'm just grinding it out. I go, yeah. He goes, oh, by the way, I, I, uh, the reason I got your, uh, your number from Barry Katz. Huh. And he goes, I saw your Tonight Show, man. Really inspiring. Oh, wow. And dude. I was just like, wow. Because no, no one ever has said good job on that. You know? Well, comics don't, it's hard for comics. If no you one don't. says good job. Right. Right. Um, unless you're best friends. So for him to do that was so fucking kind. It was very important to me. At the time, and then when he moved up here, moved to LA, we just became very good friends. There's only a few times, small moments like that, when comics do stuff, you know they mean it because they don't have to say it, unless they're your friends. Yeah. Look, I, the the one of the most meaningful moments in my career was, you know, I, I, Bill Burr tweeted at me uh, after I put out my special on Showtime in 2017, and I didn't love it. I, w- I was kind of bummed about it. Mm-hmm. I think I rushed into it. Uh, whatever. But he said something so nice in the tweet, and I texted him to thank him. And I was sitting on my patio, and I got I got emotional because it meant a lot to me. Mm. He didn't need to say anything. Yeah, publicly he could have been like, "Hey, man, good stuff." But it yeah. was just he, him doing that out loud for other people to hear. It just meant a lot to me. Yeah, he's a guy with real strong ethics. Well, he wouldn't say it if he didn't mean it. Yeah, Bill that's doesn't a, you, need uh, to yeah, do yeah. that. No, no, he's just not one of those kind of guys. Like I, um, you know. When I'm around, and because I, I like people that are flawed mm. and aren't ethical, right? Right. People people that have issues. Yeah, like you, and like you. Exactly. Yeah. That's where we're two two peas in a pot, baby. Two peas in a pot. Do you think we're peas? Whatever. But with Bill, you're like a water has, chestnut, and just, I'm like a baby carrot. Yeah, you always just like. But with Bill, what? Sorry, <laughs> my mind wanders. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> With Bill, with, but, with Bill, he there's because he has such strong ethics and stuff. I can't. He'll see through my bullshit. He sees through everybody's bullshit, right? So then I have to be at my full supreme Bobby mode. Yeah, and I don't like it. Well, you're you you. Uh, I've seen you when you've got your P's and Q's together when you're trying to be like, um, you know, a good boy. Yeah, and like focused. It's not who you are. It's not who I am. It's phony baloney. Yeah, and I think he sees through it. So one time, you know, Sebastian had some sort of like pizza party he's got an own does he have his own pizza oven one of those yeah 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 no he has italians there like real chefs he bought a couple of italians i heard yeah he paid for them online for his houses it's 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 it, it she's been there she's been there i know i see his online he posts it's, every it's, every it's, every it's other week it's a crazy. new area of his uh yeah, it's home crazy. so i um you know i'll never own a home like that you He'll, will no way i mean you would be able to afford one i never could i in my mind i'm so scared of that kind of stuff because it scares I think me. I, I, you know, um, I don't want to be like Ed McMahon. You know who Ed McMahon is? Shut up. You know who Ed McMahon was? Yeah, he was Johnny Carson's sidekick. Right. Do you know at the don't end of, talk to me like that. Like I don't well, know who who. Well, uh, sometimes I'm a part of comedy. I know, but sometimes I sometimes I think shut he, up. Sometimes I think he might not know. Yeah. Sometimes I think he might not know. Ed McMahon at the end of his career, truth be told, couldn't afford his house. They put a lien on his house. Oh really? Yeah, but that that's my point. Is like some, I think sometimes when you buy stuff that's so much, uh, that's my fear. Obviously, Sebastian's fine, but you'd think Ed McMahon would be fine. So yeah. why did they have to lean his house? Why did they have to seize his house? He just wasn't paying his mortgage. And then when he was dying, it was like, we're going to have to take it back. The bank's going to take back your house. Yeah, but if he's dying, why would he give a fuck? Because then did they, then all your finances for your children and your children's children are fucked. Oh, that's true. Then you fuck them over. Then they have to pay for all your debt. That's my biggest fear is leaving debt for other people. Back to Sebastian, though, at oh, the house. Oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah, sorry. Um, Big house. Sorry. Yeah. It's so hard to keep track with you sometimes. Yeah. I'm like a tree. I know, because we go this way, and I go this way, and then in my head, I have to go, I have to still keep this as a thing because I was starting this story. But the road less traveled. I'm going to meet you there at the end. Yeah. We're going to get there. I just want to go to the, I want to I want to get leaves all well, over This is a really me. good mental exercise for me, though. <laughs> That's what this so is. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. a you Being with you here yeah. is such a big mental exercise for me. But that's a good thing. Because, you know, not only am I talking, but there are sense, there's a sense of rage that happens inside me. Mm, same. I, I, I can see it. Yeah. They're, they're, do Like when we got into a fight outside before oh the God. show started? It was crazy. You well, know, first of all, you screamed at me. I did. You know why? Why? Because you belittled, belittled what I wanted in my life. It's belittling. It, it, you were belittling. It's a, belitt- it's a belittling thing. You belittled that me. You, you did that to yourself. You belittled me after I went and got you coffee, cigarettes, and Red Bull. And I said, I after said, After I went I and got you cancel. coffee, had, oh, cigarettes, go and Red Bull. I had to cancel. Have you ever bought anything for me like that? Have you ever gone to the store and bought me something that I, if I could text you and say, Bob, would you bring? Would you bring I me? I asked you. The, I, would, would you bring me diet coke and I coffee? Asked you to, I asked you 
need to fucking, fucking bring buy- me this because I'm not allowed to go to 7-Eleven or, or go anywhere. Whose problem is that? Because if I went to 7-Eleven with her, right, to get cigarettes, yeah. right? Yeah. She would have told on me. Stop being a snitch. Stop snitching. Because then I have to do his dirty work. So I'm asking for a fucking favor. Please, go ahead and include please in the text. Pitching a show to Fox yesterday is not the same as going to the boardroom of some country club to get in. Golf club. It's a golf club. (laughs) All right. They're not the same thing. But it doesn't matter. It's my priority and your priority. I respected yours. You respect mine. All right. So the next time I I will cancel and I will move for something ridiculous like, oh, you know what I mean? I'm shaving my legs. Today's leg shaving and it's and you know, important. And to you know me. what I would say? Yeah. If if it's important to you, I'm down. All right, good. But you have to film it. No. Yeah. The film your fucking board committee thing I for will. the country club. I will. It's a club. It's not a golf club. It's a country club. No, it's not a country club. It, that's what they call it. No, it's a men's club. It's not a. It's not a country club. Right. It's There's like a, saying, hey, "Is that a car?" No, it's a sedan. It's still a fucking car. No, not true. These are two separate things. Country clubs are are for like families. This is just a golf club. It's for golf. It's for men. It's a men's club. It's a men's club. There mm-hmm. we go. That's even worse. Why? Uh, do women go to the Korean spa that you go to, Bob? Yes. There's a women's oh, so division. There, yeah, there's a women's viv place, too. So they, they can't go with you in the, all the rooms. There is a women's there. No, okay. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, shut up. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Mm, interesting. Can you please say thank you thank you for getting you coffee and cigarettes and, and, and Red Bull? Oh, my God. It'll be my... I will never. Because you didn't say thank you. I will never say it. Why? You didn't say... Why? Because you just said get me this stuff and you didn't even say thank you to me. I'll tell you why. Why? Because the day I met you, let me just finish without you interrupting. Okay, I'll put the mic away. Okay. There are just certain things when you meet certain people. You know, I believe in an afterlife. I believe that people there we have other lives, right? And when I met you, it was almost my soul knew your soul and said, you know what? I've known this guy before in past lives. And we're intricately entwined, our destinies, all right? And there's almost a a love that you can't describe Mm -hmm. or you can't really even look up in in, in a dictionary. It really is um, something that is, uh, there's no words to, you know, to describe it. And um, and when I met you, and I've, I've done this with a lot of comics, where I, I meet them and I go, you know what? We've known each other before. So there's just unsaid things, you know? And and so when I ask you, because I'm in trouble, right? And you do that for me, I don't really find the need to thank you for it because I would do the same. And um, we're beyond that, that kind of language. I would thank you. <laughs> I would absolutely thank you. <laughs> Such a, it's a dick. I'm not. I refuse. That's fine. Yeah, I refuse. Um, and so tell me, can you finish your Sebastian about his big house that you love oh, so would, much? No, no, no. And so you went I, and got I met pizza. Ben, so I saw Be- Bill there with his, with his wife yeah, and love his baby. The best. And I have a plate full of pizza. And I walk by. I know they locked eyes with me. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of, I gotta go. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So I sit there and I go, What's your baby's name? Uh oh. You know what I mean? And he says it and he goes, How, How's the company going? And he Is goes, that, Hey man, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, that's what he was said. Yeah. What are you doing? I go, I don't know, man. I just get nervous. He does. He goes, I know. He, he goes, I know. You're doing a great job on the podcast. Thanks for being a part of our company. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. That's so, very nice. Yeah. I get really nervous around him. Uh, he's, him, Rogan, I get nervous. Papas, yeah, the big Papas. Yeah, yeah. He called me the other day. He's, uh, they're prepared to leave. He's ready to move. Yeah, I know. They move at the end of the month. Joe is? Joe's gone. Where? To Austin. Yeah. They're gone. It's, he's ready to rock. We, he called me last night and we talked for a while. And it was, it was just wild. It's wild that he's gone. He's leaving. He's like, uh, he's ready to go. A new chapter in his life. You know, there's, uh, cool. three other comics that called me and they're selling their houses. Uh, They're leaving. Let me guess. Paula Poundstone. I'm not allowed to, not allowed to Margaret say. Margaret Cho. Not allowed to say. But there's a bunch of guys leaving. People are gone. People are leaving. Because yeah. uh, they don't like the stringent, you know, rules. They don't like L.A. Here. anymore? I think that they don't like the liberal vibes and... Um, oh, so they're... Are they... Uh, they're... Uh, they want their... They, you know, they, they want more freedoms. I'll just say that. Sure, yeah. I, um... 
One of them is like he he was saying, I want to move because of my kids, you know, the school system and this and that. But I know what his ideology is. But I have heard that, that people are because LAUSD is tough. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, you know, like I went to public school as a kid. Do you go to public school or do you go to private school? Public. And, you know, I don't think they were the best in Chicago, but they were fine. Yeah, they were fine. So uh, I don't know if it's like that up here anymore because you went to public and SD. I went to a public, really good school district, um, Poway High. I went to. We've talked about it before. Yeah, you're but, in the Hall of Fame. I'm not. Um, but you know, it's probably the darkest time of my life. High school, public school. Yeah. I have no good. I have a couple of good memories, but generally it was a lot of like dick sucking and drugs. I'll just say that. Thank you for being. <laughs> a... <laughs> Yeah, Dar- high school wasn't totally black for you. There was moments where it was kind of nice, right? Well, I went to th- three rehabs in high school. Cool. Yeah, I um, didn't have a girlfriend. Um, didn't make love to anybody. Hmm. Um, I tried to be friends with the popular people. But you didn't get kicked out of school. That's nice. I At did. Least. But but that but then you got to graduate. Because every time I would go get kicked out, I would always go through a rehab. Mm. And then, you know, through the rehab, I would be able to get back into school saying that I'm sober, but then I would relapse. It was like one of those things. Sad. And um But, you know, when I was 17 is when I got sober, and it was my junior year in high school. Mm-hmm. And um, I think from junior year when I got sober until I graduated was pretty bright, I guess, because, you know, my senior year I was completely sober. I was going to AA meetings. I was, like, very active. You feel so much better when you're clean, huh? I just, I'm not good um, in a drug run. In a, in a Because I go a, hard. In a binge. In, I in go a, hard, dude. Right. I go hard, and I'm blind to it all, and I don't give a fuck. What do you think my drug would be if I was going to if I was gonna get into drugs and slip away? You're like a whiskey guy. I think an alcohol Well, that guy. it does happen. Yeah, that happens to me sometimes. You just have a, a, an alcohol temperament. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so no I don't drugs. see you as a meth guy. No. Yeah, I don't see you as a pothead. Do you smoke pot? I did for years, and I don't think I do anymore. I've, ta- I've talked about that. Uh, did your wife smoke pot? No, yeah. no, no. I mean, I don't. It's just not. Po- I, I smoked pot for a long. I smoked pot for since I was fifteen, and for high school, I smoked all the time, almost every day. College, I smoked constantly. Yeah. Then when I got out, I just I would smoke, and you know, I go through phases. Yeah. And the past five years of my life, I smoke intermittently once in a great while yeah and one day i had a bag of weed the size of this room at my house because of um we have a friend uh, who's in the comedy world that owns a company and i literally just called up my buddy and i was like hey come over and pick up this weed i just don't even think i need it i don't want it anymore yeah and then since then once in a while if i'm at a party and someone has a joint i'll hit the joint maybe yeah but no i don't i think booze is my biggest crutch yeah, I, I, you know, I don't, I feel bad that I relapsed for after 17 years of sobriety. But here's what I do like: I always, even when I, when you know, when pot became legal, you know, in California, mm. and dispensaries opened up, mm-hmm. I always in the back of my head went, "What is that like to go to a dispensary?" Yeah, because you know, when I was a kid, you know, what I mean, I would have to like search for days. You know, oh, so annoying to when get you're pot. a kid, yeah. and you're in the suburbs. You would it would take. Days to get weed. Yeah, and it was also well. I mean, and then you would get this like mud, dirt. You, you get know? you get brick weed. You get awful, shitty Mexican awful. seeds, right. brick brick weed. Yeah, but so I was wondering what that was like. So I, you know, going into the dispensary and going to the expensive. You know what I mean, it's wild. Oh my god, like the premium shit. The premium shit. I think I think being a pothead now is much cooler than it was when I was young. And then just imagine. Never having anything for 17 years and taking that first hit. Jesus. I mean, it was crazy. You had to disappear for a little while. I remember, like, I got high in Hawaii because I was shooting Magnum PI. Mm-hmm. And it took me from my hotel room to the restaurant. There was this 24 pancake house by mm-hmm. my, right? It took me like an hour to get there. <laughs> and it it's two minutes away. <laughs> Just like getting up and yeah, because I hadn't been high in almost twenty years, and right, and you're just you know it just took me forever. It's heavy, it's it heavy, was gr- and I was laughing the whole time. Yeah, 
Hey, let me let's explain. You gotta go to your country club let, soon. Stop it, uh, uh, golf club. Let me explain what's going on real fast. Mm. Um, so we have a poster here that you can see behind us. Uh, look, thank you to the fans that wanted the shirts on the back of Rudy's uh, chair or the shirts there. Um, we had over twenty five hundred emails entries to get the shirts right. So we had a computer algorithm print out. Uh, a random assortment of names that made it up to this level, right? That was the only way to do it. So there's about 200 and something names. I don't even know who's up. how many names are up there. And it's a target. Um, and who's on the target, Jules? George. George is. Yeah. And now George in this in this picture is what, Jules? What is he there? He's holding a gun. But what, what would you assume he would be then? He's a... A target. A target. Yes. He's a target He's because he's a bad guy, right? Yeah. So... I figured the best way to do it, Bob, to get the shirts out to a fans would be to have Jules shoot at the target. What yeah. do you think? I love it. I love it. You think that's idea. good? I'm going to not be in the room. No, no we, no, we have to be in the room. But I have to be in the back. We'll be behind her. Yeah, because I'm not going to be here. All right, so do you want to shoot this now? Well, let's do it while we're here. While you and I sit here? Yeah. You want her to sh- shoot, sh- shoot between us? Yeah. Wait, on his head? Anywhere in the, uh, anywhere in the well, board. Well, just, tar- just aim at him. Are you and- brave enough? You want to do it? I mean, yeah. Are you gonna, are you gonna, you're going to? you not going to kill us, are you? No. <laughs> Fuck, what if she hits one of us? I know, I know. <laughs> Jules, do you really think you can hit this without hurting us? Yeah. Okay. She, you have to shoot it twice. I, okay. Twice because uh, we have to have, have two names. All right? Yeah. And then... <laughs> I know. Okay, uh, close that. Or can you come inside well, if you want. I don't know. It doesn't I, matter. I just need to protect my face because I think she's going to shoot me in the face. Okay, Jules, come here. Get this gun and you're going to stand. All right, so the safety's off, so be careful. Okay. The safety's all. You, all you have to do is point forward and shoot it back up a, a little bit. Let's get you backed up till there. If you shoot me, you're kick, I'm gonna kick you out of the Let house. Let me close my computer because I don't wanna. Um, wait. Okay. So hold on. Hold on, Bob. Uh, okay. So it's gonna bounce. You know that it's gonna go behind. It's gonna bounce and it might hit one of us anyway. So are, are we good to go on that end? We're good. All right. I just want to protect my face because I don't want. I don't want to get hit in the face. All right. You ready, Jules? Yeah. All right. Shoot. Shoot once. Take a break and then shoot again. But I want you to say because George, I want you to go. Die, George, and then die, George, twice. Is that cool? Die, George. Die, George, twice. All right, so uh, are you ready, Andres? When you're ready, Jules, go ahead. Die, George! Again? Die, George! Did it get it? What do you mean? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Here, let me see the gun. There's nothing in there. Just air came out. Let me see, let me see. No, here, you're fine, you're fine. The The, the clip was, you, you hit this, you can't, this hits the clip out. Don't don't put your hand on that. The clip will fall out there if you go like that. Oh. So don't put your hand. Don't put your thumb there. Okay. okay. Oh my god. All right. Okay. Holy shit. All right, back up. <laughs> uh, All right, here we go. You ready? Okay, okay go ahead. Die, George. <laughs> Die, George. Okay. Where did we hit? Where did we hit? Nothing. How? Do to- the clip. Let me see. Let me see. Let's go look. Yeah, it, there, there's there's bullets in there. But I saw something bounce. How is there no holes in this? Let me oh try to. Let me, I'm gonna shoot it. I'm gonna shoot it just to see where it goes. Okay. Over there. Ready? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Yeah, the bullet just came out. You heard it, it bounce. Never, it never came out with her. All right, come on, try it again. It never came out with her. All right, do it. Try it again. <laughs> it never came out with her. All right, come on. Here we go. All right. Try it again. Go ahead. Die, George, and do it. Die, George. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Aim. Die, George. <laughs> did, did you hit it? She doesn't know to aim. <laughs> no. It didn't go? Maybe do it again. Do it again. Go closer. Get closer. Get closer. There you go. Go yeah, ahead. There we go. Die, George. <laughs> Die, George. <laughs> <laughs> that one hit my head. It did, it's not hit, hitting. What do you mean? No, it can't bounce. No way. Let me yeah. see. Let me try it. Hold on. Let me try. Yeah. What? Cl- close your eyes. Yeah. Yeah, that one went through. Taylor Abilene. You see it? Taylor Abilene. All right. Yeah, it also went there. Oh, so there is two. Higgins. Higgins. All right, so we have our two. Trey Higgins and Taylor Abilene. Are they get the shirt? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so now I want you to just um. Here's what I want you to do now. Just keep shooting it. Just rapid fire at it. Bop, 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 because we have the two names now. Now just keep shooting it. Die, George. Bop, 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 over and over. Just kill him. Yeah. Go ahead. 
<laughs> Keep going. Die, George. Die, George. Die, 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 die. Die, George. 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 Rudy, come here. Come back behind here. Go behind it. Bob. You can. Oh. <laughs> you want to shoot him? I think we need some more bullets. Yeah, hold on. I need. I need to get some more bullets. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, here. Well, here. I'll get. I'll, here. Come here. Go behind him and stand behind here and hold the gun so we can sign off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hold the gun. Hold the gun like this. Like you're. Uh, I'll put the safety back on. You know, like this. Like you're. Uh, like you're hardcore. There you go. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Re and I want you to say it. Me and Bob will just uh, watch you say it proudly. Ready? As loud as you can. Okay. Thank you for being a bad friend. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Good job, Jules.